Lisa Cole, the math lady. Today's lesson is going to be about transversals. Well, we probably should start there. What's a transversal? A transversal is any line that intersects two other lines. Okay, and I happen to have drawn my A and my B uh, as parallel lines. And line C is my transversal. Now, the transversal doesn't have to uh, intersect parallel lines, but when it does, there are some very interesting things that happen. Let's take a look at one of the phenomenons. So first of all, eight angles are formed, right? There's one here, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. And there's a number of fascinating things that happens with some of the pairs. Let's take a look at, at angle one and angle two. Angle one and angle two, see how they form, uh, their back ends form a straight line? Well, these form what's called supplementary angles. Supplementary angles always add up to 180 degrees. So that means that angle one and angle two are supplementary and they equal 180 degrees. Can you see any other ones that equal 180 degrees that are supplementary? Well, three and four will add up to 180 degrees. They had that straight line. Five and six will add up to 180. And seven and eight will add up to 180. But guess what? There's a bunch more. Remember, all we're looking for is a transversal that cuts a straight line. What about one and three? Yep, those are supplementary angles. They will add up to 180 degrees. Two and four, five and seven, and six and eight. How does this actually help us? Well, if I told you that angle one was 60 degrees, knowing that angle one and angle two are supplementary, I can find out what angle two is. All I have to do is subtract 60 from 180. Here we go. So 180 minus 60 is 120, which means angle two is 120 degrees. And if I know that two and four are supplementary, I know that these two add up to 180 degrees. Well, we just did that math, so it means that angle four is 60 degrees. And you probably know where I'm going. Three and four are supplementary, which means that angle three is 120 degrees. Okay, so that's how supplementary angles can be useful. Let's move on to another definition called Corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, let's take a look at angle one. Essentially, we're looking for an angle that sits in the same position as angle one. And if we take that angle one and we shifted it down, this corresponding angle to angle one would be angle five. So angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. Can you find some other angles that are corresponding angles? What about two? Angle two. And angle six, we see one is just really hanging above the other. Those are corresponding angles. And there are a few more. You can always go upside down now. What about three and seven, right? There's three and shifted down there seven. Yep, those are corresponding. And what about four and eight? Yep, those are corresponding. Now, why is this useful? Well, corresponding angles are congruent. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that angle one was uh, 80 degrees. Okay, I'm going to put it in red just to make life a little easier. Actually, let's make it 60 degrees. I think I had it to be 60 before. Okay, and we know that uh, corresponding angles are congruent. What does that tell us about angle five? It means that angle five is also 60 degrees. And if we knew that one and two were supplementary as before, right? And angle two was 120 degrees. Angle two and angle six are corresponding angles, so they must be congruent. So this is 120 degrees. So as long as you can remember that corresponding angles are congruent, it'll help you find the degrees of other angles on this plane. Let's look at another phenomenon that happens with transversals. They're called alternate interior angles. Let's handle the interior part first. So again, we have two parallel lines. The interior angles are the angles that are between the two parallel lines. So interior angles are angles 3, 4, 5, and 6. But when we put the word 
alternate on the front end of alternate interior angles, we're talking about alternate means on opposite sides of the transversal, which means that angle four and angle five would be alternate interior angles. And what would be another set of alternate interior angles? Again, they're interior, but they're on opposite sides of the transversal, so three and six are alternate interior angles. Now, why is this helpful? Well, alternate interior angles are congruent. That's right. So if I knew that angle three was 120 degrees, that would tell me that angle six was also 120 degrees. If I knew that angle four was 60 degrees, that would tell me that angle five was also 60 degrees. Here's our last set of angles or definitions. So we talked about alternate interior. Let's talk about alternate exterior angles. So let's handle the exterior part first. Well, we mentioned that interior was between the parallel lines. I bet you can guess that exterior has to do with the ones on the outsides of the parallel lines. And then alternate remains the same. It's on opposite sides of the transversal. So let's start with the number one. Here's one. We want the alternate on the other side, exterior, outside of the parallel lines. That means that angle one and angle eight are alternate exterior angles. Okay, what about angle two? Yep, here we go. Alternate on the other side, exterior down here. So two and seven are alternate exterior angles. And again, why is this useful? We know that alternate exterior angles are congruent. So if I knew that angle one was 60 degrees, I would also know that angle eight was 60 degrees. If I knew that angle two was 120, I also would know that angle seven was 120 degrees. What's great about all of these definitions is putting them all together, when you just know what one angle is, you might be able to fill out all the other angles in our plane. Okay, that's it. Make sure you hit the practice problems. I'm going to give you lots of different practice problems, figuring out the different angles and names and corresponding and alternate interior and exterior. Oh, it's going to be a blast, I promise. <laughs> okay, it's the Cold the Math Lady. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.